Hey, welcome back. Today we're talking about climbing the software engineering career ladder. Different companies have different names for levels. I'll explain the similarities and differences between Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. And at the end of the video, I'll also share my tips as a software engineering manager on how to get promoted faster. Also today, we're mainly going to focus on individual software engineering track. And if you want to learn more about management track, let me know in the comments and I'll make another video about it. So let's kick off with the E3 software engineer. If you're just starting out as a software engineer, you'll be called an E3. This is the starting point at Meta. And today we're going to use Meta system as an example because that's where I used to work as a software engineering manager. Some people get confused thinking level three means senior level because you must start at one, but that is not the case at Meta. The entry point is always at E3 and they usually require about zero to two years of work experience. And I know there has been a lot of controversy about how many years of experience is equivalent to an entry level job, but that's for another video. We'll stick to the traditional logical career levels for this video. As an E3, you'll most likely be part of a team fixing small parts of a project or working on smaller features. You'll get a lot of guidance and support from senior engineers. It's likely that your tasks will be broken down into more manageable pieces, making it much easier for you to ramp up. Next up is E4 software engineer. Most people go from E3 to E4 within about one to two years. At this level, you will start taking on bigger challenges and responsibilities. You'll be in charge of bigger parts of a project and you might even lead small groups of people. So it's not just about coding anymore. You'll start to collaborate with other team members, maybe you'll be mentoring others, conducting code reviews, and even planning out whole projects from beginning to end. Your work might still be mostly focused on your own team, but you're getting ready for the bigger projects and bigger scope. Next, E5 is a senior engineer level where this is a bigger step up from the previous levels. Most people at Meta reach this level in three to five years of experience. This is where you take on lead and take charge of bigger and more complicated projects. You'll be making decisions on what the team should be doing doing and how to do it. Plus, you'll start working with other teams outside of your own team on bigger projects for the whole company. This is when you start to spend more time planning and designing than actually writing code. At many companies, including Meta, E5 is considered a career level, meaning you can continue to stay at this level without constantly needing to be promoted. Whereas at junior level at E3 or E4, if you don't get promoted within a couple of years, as far as the company is concerned, you are having some some kind of a performance issue. So by the time you reach E5, you could stay at this level for 10, 20 years, and it will be okay as far as the company is concerned. Okay, things get a little tricky after E5. Titles start to change depending on the company. At Google and Netflix, E6 is considered a staff software engineer, but Meta doesn't like to have all these different levels of engineering, so you will still be called senior software engineer even though you're at E6. Amazon also retains senior engineer at L6, which is equivalent to E6. And there are ex-Meta people who call themselves staff engineers and Meta doesn't officially have that title, so I'm not sure where they're getting that information from. Also after E5, you can see the starting line for E6 kind of depends on the company. Like at Facebook, it starts a little bit earlier and then Google a little bit later and Netflix even later. So just because you're a level six at Facebook, it doesn't necessarily mean you are exactly an L6 at Netflix or vice versa. But again, titles are interchangeable. What matters more is the level itself. In terms of experience, according to levels at FYI, people usually need about 10 years or more to get here. And this means that you are a top performer typically less than 10% of engineers reach this level. And in terms of responsibilities, you're likely going to be leading projects that are main priorities of the company and make technical decisions for the entire org. This is when you really get to spend less time coding and more time making decisions and guiding other people. Similarly, at E7, titles depend on the company. Now here, the bar is even higher. Typically, this level requires about 15 plus years of experience, and often less than 3% of employees reach this level according to it, levels at FYI. And smaller companies may not even have this level at all. When you reach this level, you will have a lot of flexibility, but you're also in charge of the good and the bad results, so you will have to be really good at making decisions and owning up to 
them. And after level eight, things get really messy and complicated. Amazon calls the next level senior principal software engineer, then distinguished engineer. Google uses the term principal engineer, then distinguished engineer and fellow. Netflix starts at level 7. There are no more levels after that. And again, Meta does not really distinguish the titles at this level. This means that other people at Meta would not even know what level you are unless you advertise it yourself. Plus, these levels are so rare because most people who reach this point end up becoming managers instead of staying as individual software engineers, right? I have personally only met one person at this level as an individual contributor who's not managing people. And I've been working in tech for 20 years and I was at WhatsApp slash Facebook for eight years. So you'll know how uncommon it is. So let's talk about getting promoted. Climbing the ladder up to E5 is pretty straightforward. There's often a clear path with specific goals that you need to meet. But once you hit level five, that's when things get a bit murkier. Yes, your coding skills do matter, but now it's also about how well you play the game. Being successful at the higher levels depend more on mix of your work, your influence, and a bit of luck. It matters what type of projects that you work on, and that also often depends on building strong relationships with your team members, your boss, and even other important people within the company to have more influence. Now, if you want to learn more about how to build more influence, watch this video next. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you should watch this one next. I'll see you there.